Thank you. Thank you, George. Good morning. Good afternoon, everybody. I would like to provide a short input to this roundtable by drawing from a couple of ITF reports that help understand the role of artificial intelligence in the mapping of dangerous locations. All right. First, the ITF is privileged to run a network of road safety experts in cities. The program is called Safer City Streets. We have just published a report called Best Practice for Urban Road Safety. It contains uh, many case studies from, from cities such as Barcelona, Bogota, New York City, Rotterdam. And the experience of some cities is relevant to this one table. Take Rotterdam, for instance. The city developed a model to identify places where crashes are likely to happen, even before they happen. The model links data on crashes with data on the roads, the traffic, and the environment. The model then maps high-risk locations, um, even where no single crash was previously recorded. The municipality finds that useful to prevent crashes. Typically, they, uh, they change the street design based on uh, what the model says. But how do they know what to do precisely? Um, to, to know that, they are guided by a powerful feature of the model that is called the, the what-if analysis. Unlike uh, typical black box AI, uh, this is what we call explainable AI. Uh, Rotterdam's model got a national award and is being expanded to other regions in the Netherlands. The next slide, uh, the strength of the model, where does it come from? Uh, diverse data sources, for sure. It feeds from 300 variables. Um, developers told us they were agnostic towards AI. They didn't rush towards it for the sake of it. They simply observed that machine learning results in a better predictive power than traditional statistical approaches. If you consider the long list of variables and the million ways they could interact, should we be surprised? Um, do feel free to comment in, in the chat window on that. Uh, in the list of variables, you probably saw uh, what I highlighted, that is uh, heartbreaking here. One could easily imagine what happens um, if the driver didn't break at all. Uh, a crash would have happened. This takes us to the broader topic of surrogate metrics. So let me start with some definitions on that. Back in the 80s, in, in Sweden, uh, Christa Haydn uh, developed the theory of a safety pyramid. Crashes are only the tip of uh, Haydn's pyramid. But below crashes, you see the, the foundations in gray. Um, they are made of a vast number of much more frequent conflicts and interactions. Conflicts typically involve evasive action, such as braking or swerving. Uh, Haydn proposed that the number of conflicts could uh, predict and therefore prevent the occurrence of rare but more serious crashes. A solution to count the number of conflicts is called, in this context, a surrogate safety metric. Uh, in the 80s, people had to spend hours on site to count the number of conflicts. Now, thanks to AI, computer vision does it for us. Looking at one junction is good and increasingly common, but covering the whole network should, would be better. Uh, the way to do so, uh, we believe, is by using vehicles, smartphones, and other devices as, as probes. Uh, cycling apps uh, already log and report heartbreaking events when they, when they work in partnership with local authorities. Uh, this map shows um, heartbreaking on bicycles in Paris, for instance. It would be good to test if this information really helps predict crashes. In Manchester and Dublin, cyclists created a crowdsourced map of potholes. How? Uh, simply by using a smart bike light. But uh, now let's talk about the elephant in the room in terms of road safety. This is speed and speeding. 
uh, we know that uh, a 1% decrease in speeds results in a 4% decrease in road death. On this example, the New York University compiled data from over 100 drivers for several months. Uh, the drivers used a smartphone app that connects to the OBD port of the vehicle. OBD stands for Onboard Diagnostic. It makes it possible for third-party telematics to read data live from a vehicle. And, and this is important uh, because smartphones GPS signal can be very, very noisy in urban canyons, uh, in which case the vehicle's odometer is more accurate. We believe that precise speed data is of great value to road safety professionals. On the left is a map of speeding hotspots in New York City. On the right is a map of uh, critical braking events. Such information can be presented on, on a dashboard by district, by time of day, by day of the week, by month. Uh, it could support enforcement, support education, support traffic calming measures, and it could help evaluate their benefits. And yet not every city has access to precise speed and speed distribution data. Why? Let's discuss. Speed and acceleration are good to have, uh, but for a complete understanding of risk, having eyes on the streets is better. Uh, this is what IRAP has understood. Here is a street with a three-star pedestrian safety rating from the International Road Assessment Program. The image, one image is useful to report on static features such as um, horizontal marking, such as footpath, uh, fencing, etc. But uh, only a regular stream of images would, would assess, for instance, how often the footpath is blocked by parked vehicles. A regular stream of images is what we can expect from connected vehicles sold uh, with a growing number of driver assistance systems. Those equipped with autonomous emergency braking, or AEB, may already capture very precious data on situations where a crash was nearly, nearly avoided. They uh, could report on the number and exact locations of these events. They could also report details on the kind of conflicts that occurred. Is it with a pedestrian, with a bicycle, etc., helping to diagnose the problem. In this roundtable, we are not talking about the safety performance of autonomous vehicles or driver, driver assistance systems. But instead, we are talking about the data those systems can produce and share with the authorities to create a safer network for everyone. So let's take one minute to recap, whether you look at potholes, road design problems, at speeding or at heartbreaking, you're looking at different sorts of surrogate metrics, surrogate safety metrics, and uh, some may be more accurate than others, uh, but they have something in common, uh, remarkable benefits in common. They help you, that's my first point, identify and fix problems before serious harm happens, this is a proactive attitude. It is at the heart of a safe system, and it seems difficult to deliver a vision zero agenda without a proactive attitude. My second point is that using surrogates, you don't have to wait for five years uh, for accumulated crash data before you evaluate the benefits of an intervention. Benefits may be estimated within days or maybe simulated beforehand. Is it too good to be true? Um, some people remain skeptical. Uh, more research would be welcome indeed for the rigorous evaluation and benchmarking of the power of surrogate uh, to predict crash and predict especially the serious and fatal crashes. Much of this uh, material I talked about is taken from another ITF report called New Directions for Data-Driven Transport Safety. Uh, from what I presented today, we conclude that auto automatic data collection covering the whole road network, not just urban junctions, is possible and seems like an opportunity which must not be missed um, in a safe system. Uh, connected vehicles, smartphones are our potential data sources and the road safety community should, should explore both avenues 
um, as data sources. Um, among surrogate safety metrics, we found low hanging fruits, such as the occurrences of a vehicle's, uh, when a vehicle's active systems are triggered. This does not seem to require any 5G or any many gigabytes worth of data flows. This is very simple data. And um, this third point here is that we hope to put, uh, no, sorry, we already put much hope in surrogate safety metrics and so much that we should conduct more research on it. This will build trust and accelerate their adoption for the proactive management of, of road safety. That was my input to this roundtable. Thank you very much.